Hello again. Welcome, everyone, to this session that I've been looking forward to for so long. Yeah. Um, systemic Constellations, one of my most favorite tools that I've ever experienced, but I haven't experienced it online, so this is, uh, is going to be fun. Um, we've got some really fabulous uh, facilitators. I'll hand over to them after a little short video that's going to frame up uh, this whole week. For those of you who haven't uh, uh, been to any other sessions, um, and just some kind of general safe, uh, safe space housekeeping rules. We would love it if you can keep your video on for the first half, especially, uh, so we can get some nice uh, interaction going. And uh, it is interactive, so please feel free to type in the chat, or uh, uh, but also at, at the invited times, uh, you can put your hand up or you can unmute yourself and um, yeah, make space for others as well. So we can be as inclusive as possible. So I think that's pretty much it. Oh, there's one other thing that I'll mention is that the session is recorded. If you're uncomfortable with any element of that being shared um, uh, on our YouTube channel, then please do let us know and we will take care of that for you. So with that, um, I shall hand over to Jenny and her colleague after this short video. Buckle up and enjoy. Catalyst 2030 started life as a WhatsApp group among social entrepreneurs, connecting to envision real transformational change. Launched at the World Economic Forum in January 2020, it's grown into a global movement accelerating change to ensure the SDGs are reached by 2030. Fueled by passion, our 550 members working in 175 countries have collectively put in an amazing 50,000 volunteer hours, touching the lives of 2 billion people. And we're driven by values, to which we hold ourselves accountable. 2020 was a busy year, co-creating three reports with partners and producing one of our own. Inviting high-level guests to participate in the Catalyzing Change campaign, hosting fireside chats and expert hours, which will be continuing in 2021. To celebrate our achievements, together we placed our supporters in the limelight with the first Catalyst 2030 Awards for Systemic Change. With the blessing of the Dalai Lama, we celebrated finalists and winners in the following categories. Special recognition for our early supporters, individual philanthropists, donor organizations, philanthropic intermediaries, corporate organizations, bi- and multilateral organizations, and four regional winners in the category of national governments. And now on to Catalyzing Change Week 2021. During this social entrepreneur-led event, we bring together diverse stakeholders in over 100 sessions to showcase their systems change efforts and the best practices that can accelerate our work in pursuit of the SDGs. <coughs> So thank you. Welcome everybody. Um, I'm Jenny Clayster 10 and uh, my invitation to you all is to post in the chat where you're from. I'm from uh, Oxford in the UK, just outside of Oxford. And I'd like you to introduce you to my co-facilitator, Corinne Devery, who's based in Paris. Um, Hi, hello, everybody. Um, I'm reluctant to say good morning. It's still good morning for me, but I guess it's not the same time for some of you. It's, uh, it's lovely to see you. Um, our, our session is, is about collaborating. And I'm obviously collaborating with Corinne today here. And so I'd just like to extend a note of gratitude to Corinne, because what I really like about working with Corinne is that I know she knows her subject. She is someone that works at huge depth and I really value that. So thank you, Corinne, for bringing that structure and for bringing that rigor around your topic. Well, Jenny, thank you very much indeed. I remember where we first met in Oxford some years ago and uh, I was drawn to you because of your uh, intuitive sensitivity. And I, so I've got to know you. Um, it's a wonderful combination of intellectual capacity and still this, uh, this great sort of emotional 
uh, intelligence as well. So it's always a joy to work with you. Thank you. Thank you, Corinne. Thank you. Okay, so the topic of our, our discussion today then is around systemic constellations. The purpose of constellations is to reveal what is in a system. So we often, as participants within systems, can't see what is going on in the system. It's hidden to us. So the purpose of a constellation is to reveal what's hidden, what the blockers are, and eventually what the opportunities are within it. So our session today is going to take the form of two parts. In the first part, we're going to work on our inner world because we need to land ourselves in the system. So that's very, very important. Obviously systems are a vast territory, so we can go from the micro, ourselves, our inner selves, our senses, our body, and we can go to the macro, which can extend to our team, our organization, our industry, our society, and indeed the, the SDGs. Each one of those is a system and the interrelationship between them is, are also systems. So what we will do is we will run the two sessions. We'll have the first half where we'll first of all give you a demo and then you'll get the chance to work by yourself initially and then in pairs. And then in the second half, we'll run a group constellation and I'll be asking for a volunteer to help me with that. So just to warn you. <laughs> okay, so first of all then, to land yourself here, we've all created a field. By definition of the fact that you logged on this morning, we've created a field. A field. So I'd like to know by a gesture, how are you feeling? Can you just show me? How are you feeling? Just use your body. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> some, uh, okay, some so well. looks, is there any sleepy ones? I, I, I noticed it's a great that gesture. I hooked into the, <laughs> <laughs> the sleepy ones. Sleepy ones are also welcome. Everything is welcome. This is the field. Everything is welcome. So in order to land ourselves more fully, I'm going to just take us through a very short mindfulness exercise that I invite you to participate in. I like to close my eyes, you don't have to, but it works for me if I do so. So please close your eyes if you're doing so. Feel your feet on the floor. Feel the energy of the earth beneath you. Notice your breathing. Breathe deeply from the root of your stomach. Keep breathing. Feel the air on your skin. Swallow. Let your hearing be wide. Listen outside the room, beyond the room, as far as you can listen. Keep checking in with your breathing. Bring your listening into the room and notice what you're hearing. Keep checking into your breathing. And now open your eyes and see. Thank you. 
And now, how do you feel? <laughs> Brilliant, thank you. Okay, so we're going to move to our first exercise now and uh, Corinne will uh, demonstrate to you using some objects. So yes. Corinne, have you uh, created your field? Well, I'm going to do it as I speak. I, what I'd like to just say is this whole uh, methodology is very much a somatic one. And what we are inviting you to do is to tune in to your felt sense, the sense that you have that you carry within you of a situation, even though it might not be very explicit. It's a way of just getting out of our heads and also tuning into um, the whole of us. So when you are invited to do the exercise, just trust whatever comes up for you, whatever feelings, physical, with images, um, everything is information. So what I'm going to do is we've, we've created um, a question uh, around this little mini constellation and I'm going to use objects to represent rather than people. And Jenny is actually going to facilitate it, but because I've got the computer that I can tip my, my, <laughs> my uh, screen down, um, I hope you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Yeah. What I've got here is an A4 piece of paper, which represents the system. It's clearly bounded, so we can see the limits of the system. And the question that uh, we are asking here is, what is my relationship? How do I feel about collaboration? And how do I feel about competition? So in this mini constellation, we're going to set up these representatives. So I'll just hand over to, to Jenny, who will, in, who will uh, facilitate this mini constellation for me. Okay, Corinne, so where, where would you like to place yourself or a representative for yourself? Right, so I'm just picking up, I've got some random small objects here and I'm just choosing one to represent me. I've got this little stone here and I'm just feeling into where in my system I belong. So that's me. Okay, so tell me how you feel. I feel quite small. Mm. And I realize I've, um, I've, I didn't think about it. I just picked up this little piece and it's, it's sort of pointing out of the system actually. Mm. Um, so that's already yes. a little bit of information. Okay, so would you like then to choose an object to represent cooperation? Or collaboration, I should say. Yeah. Right. This is what I've chosen to represent collaboration. Um, yeah, I'm placing it there. Yeah. And how do you feel now? We've got collaboration in the field. I'm aware that it's there and I realise that I'm not actually looking at it. Mm. But I'm, I'm glad. I feel, I feel sort of, yes, that I can feel it's there. I can feel it's there, but I can't see it yet. Mm. Okay. And since we've introduced collaboration, by definition, we probably should introduce competition. So would you like to choose an object for competition? Because we can't pretend it doesn't exist. Mm. Oh yes, okay. Yeah. How do you feel now? <laughs> I 
and I realized that I, I sort of want to say, I don't want to look at you. You're too big for me. Mm. Which are you closer to? I'm, I'm closer to collaboration, yeah. So we also say in this work that there are no mistakes and everything belongs to the field. This is a wild card, Corinne. I said cooperation instead of collaboration. Could you choose something to represent cooperation? Hmm. Hmm. So far, yeah, the I realize it belongs between collaboration and competition. Cooperation is between collaboration and competition. That's just really quite interesting. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> so is there anywhere else you need to move now towards better yes i'd like to turn around <laughs> oh yeah hmm. now i can see i can see them all uh -huh. You've got That's very interesting. I've got a wider perspective and I realise that the distance between them is pretty much the same. And it's like they're all in, they're all part of, of something that seems to be connected somehow. That's how, that's how I'm feeling about it. Mm. So is there anything else you need to do or say? I, I see, I see you're there. I see you all have a place in this system. Maybe moving co cooperation a little bit closer. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. But they, they definitely feel as they all have a place there. And I, I don't have the same reluctance to, to look at competition. I can see that it's there and it has its place. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much, Corinne. So just to share with you all, when Corinne and I were devising that exercise, we, we didn't have cooperation in it at all. So, <laughs> you know, that's, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Corinne. It appeared and I've just realized that I actually I quite like having cooperation behind me, supporting me. So it's almost like, like this, let's see. Ah, yes. Yeah, it's a kind of resource. Yeah, wonderful. Thank so. you. So by the way, I, I omitted to say at the beginning, if you've got questions around any of the exercises we're doing, or the concept in general, please post them in the chat. There will be opportunities for, you, for us to discuss your questions towards the end. Um, for now, we're gonna give you an opportunity to work. So I'm gonna hand over to you, Corinne, to, to guide this part. Yes, well, it's exactly the same process. The first thing you need to do is to find 
uh, something that will represent a, a limited field for you. I've, I used a piece of paper, an A4 piece of paper, or anything which has a boundary that you can place on the desk in front of you. And some, ob yes, that's Cecile, that looks good. Um, a large piece of paper just coming up there. And choose some objects. Yep, lovely demonstration there for Nick. Objects that, if possible, you could see some kind of direction. Uh, if you've got objects which don't have any means of direction, you might, if you can, either put a little arrow on them or a piece of paper with a post-it, because the things that they, you're going to be looking for are distance and direction. Now, it's very important with this exercise to start small and build up as you go along. So what you need to do is to first feel into choosing an object for you that feels somehow right and start by placing your representative into the system in the place that feels right. And an important point here is that here you are mapping uh, the real situation, the situation as it is, not as you would like it to be. Because this is, this is uh, one of uh, the dynamics that we're looking at. What is? What's reality? What's really happening? So it's not an ideal situation. It's where you feel you are in your system. So once you've found a place for you, uh, then choose. And again, this could be information for you. Choose a representative for collaboration and choose a representative for competition. And maybe just see which one you feel you want to place first, because that will be information for you too. Corinne, Nick, there's a question in the chat. Should we reflect on the nature of the objects we can use? No. Follow your instinct and intuition on that um, and place them. And then when you are looking at the whole map, just notice what you notice about your choice of objects. The idea is not to think too much in choosing them. It's just to follow your intuition, place them in the system and then see when, when you've placed them. So if you have got your self and these two elements in the system, just notice what comes up for you. If everyone has got their maps, just make a gesture with like a thumbs up or we'll use the electronic one, you've all got your maps, then we, we'd like to ask um, our techie champion, <laughs> Ben, ben. <laughs> to put you into groups of two. And hopefully you can do this. The exercise consists of showing your map to each other and just helping each other to notice whatever you notice in your partner's map. So this is where you can check out distance between the elements direction in which they might be looking and the relative size of the elements. And if you feel that it, it was like we did with, with uh, my map, that um, collab collaboration wants to be in the system, then feel free to add that as well. A cooperation rather, because we, we set up collaboration, competition and um, cooperation might want to be there as well. So it's up to you if you feel it's missing and needs to be there, put it in. So you will, we'll give you um, a total of 10 minutes, so five minutes each, just to support each other with what you notice with each other's maps. Thanks. Are the instructions clear for everybody? Thanks, Corinne. Just to let you know, just due to the numbers, there will be one room of three. I hope this is okay. Right, in that, in which case, could we take 12 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> so that means that the, the group of pairs could have a little bit longer and then we have at least four minutes for the three because you need to, that's fine that's right. fine with us Jenny isn't it time wise yeah. yeah yeah so let's say 12 minutes thank you very much Ben see you soon
it's are we on our own now yes we no we're not Toshit and Tanishka, Tanishka. are have, you with us they may have disappeared well they've got their, their mics are off and their cameras are off so we don't know whether they're there or not but anyway um mm. so, how are you doing yeah. yeah it's interesting i find it very interesting that we both get we, we keep getting muddled up between collaboration and cooperation because you you <laughs> did it as well and here we have in the post i don't know if you've seen it here in germany we battle with collaboration for our history in nazi germany hence cooperation resonates more and then he's given us a a dictionary definition and it we and the same thing happens in france because of ah. exactly the same reason we never use collaborate collabo because collabos were the ones that sided with the vichy and all the militia so it's a no-no oh isn't that interesting mm. but it's great this is all information it's great i think i think they seem to have got it i mean they seem to be sort of tuning I could, in i could see my son going well, I only realised he was your son when I sort of thought, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> he looks so different because he's got this big bushy beard. Well, you I... should see mine. <laughs> right. Well, <I'll... laughs> I mean, you're lucky. <laughs> oh, Hello, sorry, Ben. ben. We're to... Thank you. We're here talking about Anthony and his beard and you're still there. Must be very boring for you. <laughs> well, I mean, I've just been trying to... Um, uh, because obviously some people haven't joined the wait waiting room, so I've just been trying to move people around so they're all in pairs. So, but I think thank we, you. I think we're yeah. good. What about uh, Tanishka? Is she with us or not? I don't think so. No. No, we've lost her. Okay. Um, Corin, your thoughts? No, I think it's fine. It's just that that the timing, of course, is 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 it's we've sort of we're at the place we thought we'd be. Yeah. Um. I knew that was going to happen, actually. But but because this is such a useful exercise for people to actually get a taste of it. Yeah, it's too individually. Yeah. And you might might just have to adjust the group constellation slightly. Yeah. It's but otherwise, I, you know, I'm I've, I'm really thrilled that they're coming from so many different places. It's quite a big reach here, even with a small group. Yeah. And it's the night for some people. Is it the night for some people? Or much later? What do we do with that then, Corinne, this information that the word doesn't translate? Should we just wait to see if it comes out in the big constellation? Yeah, I don't yeah. need to make any big deal of it either. But I understand exactly why, why in, as I say, in German and in, definitely in French, collaboration is a dirty word. What about cooperation in French? Oh, that's fine. Yeah, because he's, this, this is very interesting, <laughs> because he said cooperation resonates more. Yeah. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Um, we have someone in the waiting room. Um, I'm hesitant to put them in and put them straight into a room because they may not understand the exercise. Should I keep them in the waiting room until we're done with the exercise? Um, yes, probably. Bring... Yeah, just explain they're in the middle of finishing off an exercise. If they don't mind waiting, that they can join for the bigger exercise because I don't know what you think, Jenny. We've either got to brief them individually and do the exercise for them to get something from this bit. What do you think? We can we we could we could just brief them with what okay. the others are doing. Let's just do that. Okay. Would you, do you want to do that, Corinne? Or do yeah, you want me to you, do it? Would you like to as I did the other bit? You want me to? No, you do it, it's fine. Okay. It's your exercise. Hello? <laughs> Is he here? Nadim? Yes, I'm there. Ha Hello, Nadim. Is that your, is that the name that I can address you? Nadim, is that yes, it? Yes, please. Yes, okay. please. Um, thank you for, for joining us. Um, the, the participants are actually in an exercise that we set up. Okay, I'm so sorry I got late. I was in another session, actually. I just... It's okay. <laughs> thank you right. very much. Thank you. So, would you? Sorry. 
would you like to do the exercise for yourself so that you know what they're doing? Yes, please. Okay, right. Um, I can't, I can't, I can hear you perfectly well. I can't see you. And I'll just ask if you can see me. Um, I can see you. I'm trying to open my video, but it is not uh, getting connected. Don't worry. Don't worry. If you can see me, that's the most important thing. What we have invited people to do is to set up a little mini constellation okay. on the desktop. So okay. to find, find something like an A4 piece of paper, something which actually designates a system with a boundary. Okay. okay. And place that on your desk. Okay. I'm just going to pull my, can you see that what I'm doing here? Yeah. And then to find so, some small objects that, that come to hand that okay. you can use to represent you and okay. your relationship to okay. cooperation and competition. That's the exercise that we've been asking to people to do. So asking, first of all, you choose something to represent you. Okay. And place it in the system. Okay. In the place that seems right to you. Mm -hmm. That's right. And then to choose an object for cooperation. Okay. And place that in the system. Okay. And a third object representing competition. Okay. And just to feel into whether this represents your inner sense of how it is for you in relationship to these elements. Okay, so I have to feel and I have to sense that one. What is my That's relationship it. with these objects? Exactly. It's, you're relying on your felt sense, not just your head. It's not a rational exercise. It's a somatic one, Nadine. Okay. So just notice how you're positioned, feel into whatever information comes up for you. And notice also perhaps the distance between the elements, between you and the elements. Okay. Let me let me do that. Okay. Okay. Jenny, did you notice what time we start? We no, but Ben would have. Ben, did you notice how much more time that they've got left? So we have three minutes seventeen left, um, and then a one minute um, notification will pop up for them, and they'll have so yeah, four minutes left roughly. Excellent. Um, so Tanishka has now joined the room, but she is unfortunately by herself. Um, shall I put Nadine, Nadim, sorry, in that room? That yeah. That's a good idea. Right. Okay. Maybe Nadine can share with Tanishka because I'm not sure when she left. Good idea. Great. Okay, there we go. So do we want to say anything, Corinne, or are we quite happy with the way it's going? I'm just looking at the timing because it's important that we actually do do the group constellation. So you may only have 15 minutes, but that's okay. But just, just that you can still get, get stuff done into 15 minutes. I mean, you can do a, we, yeah. we can do, you know, you can get information out of a 10 minute one even, but um, so they should be back just before quarter two. Let's just say that we only allow enough time for a debrief one or two people to say anything and make sure we start the group at 10 to. How's that? Yeah. They'll be, Does that work? Sorry, they'll be back in two minutes. Excellent. Great. So at the very latest, starting the group by 10 to and take it from there and you just feel into the timing. 
We've got the slides then. After, after they come back and Corinne's done the debrief, yeah. which we're only going to ask two people instead of before we would have asked more, uh, can you flash the slides up and I'll just do them quickly? Of course, yeah. Then we go into the group exercise. Great. It's fine because it, 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 it's otherwise they're going into everything cold. So we're feeling our way into this, which is given that it's digital as well, even more necessary, I would say. It's all right, because we left a lot of time at the end for the um, debrief and the questions. It's well, fine. This is that this is what I call the meat in the sandwich, though, you know, Jenny. So, I mean, just the, you, if you if you always allow more time for this sort of thing than for all the theory around it, I think that's that's mm. the way to go. Mm. I kept expanding the time knowing it would happen. And oh, anyway, it's fine. It doesn't matter. It happens every time. <laughs> I don't know why we bother putting timings as facilitators, really. Oh no, because it's very. It's, it, I've just realised working on Zoom like this, it's really important to to sort of hold it as a as as a boundary. As an intention, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels safer for people as well. Mm. Hello, guys. Hello, you're back. <laughs> I am back. Yeah. I think we were efficient. We efficiently uh, ran our canvas. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Results oriented. Hi, Jane. Hi, Jane. <laughs> Can't see what's written on those signs. It's Hello. signs for the SDGs, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Helen, where are you calling in from? Oh, you're mute. Sorry. I'm in London. Oh, you're in London. Is it grey there? It's grey here. Grey with a tiny little bit of sunshine coming through, but it's freezing. Same here. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to believe it's May. Yeah, I saw the hailstones in Oxford though yesterday. So Yeah, so my neighbour <laughs> told me. I think everyone's back. Great. Hmm. Looks like it. Yep. So does anyone want to share their experience of that exercise? And obviously you're not obliged to, but if you just like to say something, just a couple of minutes allow anyone who wants to take that opportunity. Yes, Anna. Hello. Well, thank you, first of all, uh, Jenny and uh, Corinne. Um, it's really nice to be here. And uh, I hope uh, I'll be able to show my constellation uh, properly. So bear with me. Can you see that? Yes. Yes? Yes. OK. So. Um, I um, took uh, this object here as representing myself and um, I began by placing it here. Uh, We've lost. To... Oh no, oh. there it is. It's okay, carry on. Yes, I began by placing it uh, closer to the edge of the frame. Um, but, uh, and this... Uh, cable here intertwined represents collaboration <laughs> and uh, this uh, I reveal my age this uh, object here tall <laughs> represents competition uh, I saw the distance definitely as significance between myself and competition and uh, this represents cooperation uh, when talking with Andrew, uh, as we were speaking, I, I had the feeling or sense to put myself in between this object representing collaboration, uh, because it, 
for me, collaboration is part of my DNA, I say. It's something that drives me uh, a lot. Uh, and I thrive best in that environment. But at the same time, uh, I see competition as uh, being something uh, that I'm quite new to coaching professionally. Uh, I do it in my role uh, as an educator, but uh, so I see that there's some distance uh, and that distance is not just about what I know or don't know, but it's about uh, my background and my culture, my values and how I feel they fit into the current uh, approaches that exist. So I'm still seeking that. And that's been part of my research and my, my, my PhD. So I see that there's, there's something there, but I, I haven't yet quite bridged that gap. And corporation uh, is here at the moment. That's where I've left it because I don't know yet whether that's helpful because I see collaboration as being helping to deal with more complex things because it suggests to me it's not just a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, cooperating with someone. Um, so I'm not quite sure where cooperation sits for me. So that's how far we got. Thank okay. you. Thank you very Thank much, you. Anna. So time for just one more person, I think. You don't have to, if you don't necessarily need to show us the map, but just a, a word about your experience will be lovely. Duncan. Thanks, yeah, Duncan. I was partnered with um, Toshi and um, uh, yeah, so I, I'll just quickly show you the map and um, Anyone see that? Yeah. So um, this rubber or razor was me. Um, this was collaboration. It's a crystal, which is clear. This is um, a little fob IT stick. And this was cooperation. And then this was um, competition. And um, <clears throat> I, I kind of position myself on the edge of the constellation. Um, and Toshi sort of uh, was quite insightful just sort of saying you know I'm, I'm on the periphery um, what, what it's actually come up for me as I, I think about this is I find competition very linear and very one-dimensional and um, I end up working with a lot of people often that say they want to collaborate but actually really what they want is they want to get their outcome and so I end up just cooperating and um, <laughs> when you're in relationships like that, it sometimes is frustrating because um, sometimes the real truth doesn't come out. It's uh, you're, you're being nice to be polite. <laughs> and the reason I've got the collaboration over here is um, it's in the white space. It's the opportunity for growth. And it's the bit that empowers me the most. So that's me. Thank you very much, Duncan. Yeah. Right, Jenny. Okay, so now what we're going to do, is, Ben, if you could put up the slides. We're going to do a group constellation. And as we've already mentioned, the purpose of a group constellation is to look at what is. So, so systems, as we know, are very complex. So we're going to seek to cut through that get some clarity about what is, what exists in the system, and that includes what is currently invisible to us often. So we're going to look at the blockers. We're going to hopefully get some insight into what might be the next best step for action. We won't be exploring the full blame solutions because we don't have time. The real uh, essence of constellations work is to first understand what is so it's bringing it to awareness that's the essence of all our work once we've got awareness then we can choose the next step next slide please Ben 
So the process then that we're going to use is, first of all, I'm going to ask someone who has a real issue. And hopefully this will be someone with a real issue around collaboration or cooperation with the SDGs. And then that person will be working with me as the facilitator to explore that issue. So first of all, it'd be a discussion. And then I'll ask who that person would like to choose to represent parts of the system. So that can be either people, it can be states of mind, it can be anything. We don't yet know. It's emergent work. So you may be called upon at any time by the issue holder to represent whatever it is we've chosen. Could be trust, could be anything. You, you don't, of course, have to work. You can choose not to. But if you're called, it would be an opportunity for you to be a part of the constellation. The rest of the community, we are a field here. The rest of the community are holding the field. So you are part of the constellation. So we're going to invite you to turn your cameras off until you are chosen. But please don't go away and feed the cat or get a <laughs> cup of tea because you are already part of the field and your absence will be felt. Okay. Next slide, please, Ben. Anything you want to add, Corinne? Or? No, that's that's absolutely fine. We're, we're all in service of the system here and everyone will learn something. So thank you in advance. <laughs> OK, so the inquiry, we framed this inquiry around the theme of the event, which is collaborating. Some people call it cooperation. Some people call it co collaboration. What collaboration challenges do you face? That's the question we're holding here today. So thank you, Ben. I think we can, if somebody could post that question in the chat, thank you. And then I'd like to invite somebody, hopefully somebody that's working in the context of the SDGs to volunteer. Um, just raise your hand oh, we've got it's a hand not up a, we do have a hand up we have we? andrew yes andrew i can't see andrew yes, Where's i andrew? can see a little, a little hand we have we have andrew them. hello yes you're at the top left of my screen yes. welcome thank you very much for volunteering it's, it's a privilege thank you. Thank you so to work much. with you so everybody else yeah, then, so would you like for temporarily? For and, uh, for well, it's, it's our pleasure. Thank you for volunteering. It's thank very you. brave. Thank you so much, Jenny. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so let me just ask yeah. everybody else to turn their cameras, cameras I, I, I off. A, 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 um, Andrew, just a minute, please. I just need to ask everybody else to turn their cameras off, except for Corinne and myself. Thank you, guys. So, Andrew, let's let me hear from you, if I may. What are your challenges around collaboration? Uh, one of the challenges I'm facing is uh, people have been having a misconception of the meaning of the term collaboration. Uh, uh, they are collaborating to do things outside the main objective of, of an organization. So the biggest challenge I'm having is having people who, they say that they are collaborating, but in the real sense, they are not doing it in the right way. So the misconception of the term collaboration is a very big challenge. The second okay. challenge I'm, I'm, I'm facing is uh, when you are, the second challenge is people coming together but they are not having a common vision. And you see, if you're not a vision bearers, then you will, not, you will not achieve the objective of what you are meant to achieve. So two things, misconception of the term, the second uh, challenge is about- uh, and Okay, so those, to... 
carry the vision. Okay, I get you. Forward. So f firstly, misconception. Secondly, around a common vision. So let me ask you then, of those two yes. issues, which holds the most energy for you? The first or the Pardon? second? Which of those two issues that you've presented today, the misconception and no common vision, which one has the most urgency or energy for you? Which one's most important to you? Misconception. If people can misconception. understand misconception, if people can understand what collaboration is, then they can do it meaningfully to change okay. the world. So, so the other thing I would uh, like to invite you to do is not to talk about people, to talk about yourself. So the inquiry today is around what you mean about misconception, about collaboration, okay? Because yes. you're, you're, you carry this idea that there's a misconception, but someone else might not. So the inquiry is around you, not they or others. Is that okay with you? Yes, that's okay with me. Okay, great. So, my invitation then is for you to choose somebody to represent yourself. So, a representative for Andrew. Uh, from the group? From the group. From someone on your screen. Uh, I can choose uh, Jen, Jen Dorset. Jane, yes. Jen Doset. Oh, Jane. 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 Would you, so would you care to represent Andrew? Yes. Okay, so then the invitation, Jane, is to turn your camera on and to rename yourself representative for Andrew. You can just put rep, rep for Andrew, <laughs> shorten it. You know how to rename yourself, Jane? Um, if you click on your image on the top right, there's the three little dots and you go to rename. Yep. Sorry, what did you want me to rename myself to? Rep for Andrew. Okay. So Andrew. Yes. Just give us a bit more information about this misconception. Uh, if you talk about misconception, I mean people not having a, having a clear understanding of the meaning of the term collaboration. That is, I'm saying that I'm collaborating with so and so, yet in my conceptual understanding, I don't conceptualize the meaning of the term collaboration. You don't, don't conceptualize. I, if I don't conceptualize the meaning of the term collaboration, I cannot practice what I don't understand. Okay. I have to, okay. I have to, I have to understand it so that I can practice it. I cannot practice something which I don't understand. And if I practice it, uh, somebody said the passion without skill is very dangerous. I can do it, but okay. without skill to be dangerous. Okay. So can you, Andrew, Think of a particular person. Have you got a particular person in mind who is embroiled in this misunderstanding? In my context? In your current context, can you think of a particular person who doesn't understand the meaning of collaboration? Yes, I, I'm thinking of a few, not just one, I've heard of a few. Would you like to choose one that's given you the most trouble? The one that's given you the most headache recently? Yes, I, uh, yes, I'm thinking, I, yes, I've thought of him. Okay, now you might want to, because we don't know who in the community this person knows, so you might want to uh, choose someone to represent that person and just maybe give them a job title or if, if it's a name it's okay as long as 
we're respectful to their confidentiality, it's okay. Um, you can choose a name for him if you like. You can choose another name for him or her. It's okay, as long as it's a real situation. I, I choose from the group to want to represent Choose from you. the group. Nadim, from the group. Nadim. So Nadim, would you care to come into the constellation and represent, who are they representing? Who or what are they representing? They could represent headache, if you like. Yes, they are representing uh, somebody hard to deal with. Some, somebody? Hard to deal with. Hard, I, hard, hard to deal with, hard. Somebody hard? Yes, hard to deal with. Hard to believe? Hard to, to deal, deal with. with. Oh, hard to, to deal with. with. Okay, so, Nadim, would you yeah. like to come in and represent hard to deal with? Okay, so shall I change my name? Yes, please. Okay, I have done that. Okay, so I'm just waiting for you to pop in. There you go, there you are. Okay. And let me hear now then from representative for Andrew. How are you feeling? What's going on for you as the representative for Andrew? And just before you answer that, my invitation is for you to check into your body as you answer this. So you could be feeling anxious, you could be feeling stressed, you could be feeling entirely calm and happy, and it's likely to show up somewhere in your body. So you could say something like, my stomach's in a mess, I'm full of anxiety, or you can just talk through what, what you're experiencing right now, but do draw on your body as Corinne said, this is a somatic experience. Um, so I'm just looking, I suppose, how I was, how I have my arms. Um, so there's something there, I don't know, perhaps a bit of tension, but perhaps this isn't how I would normally have my arms. So perhaps this is the collaborative bit in a way, because I've got them joined. Mm. Um, I suppose a sense of, a bit of a sense of confusion. Um, well, I'm noticing that you've got your hands tied. Does that have any significance? Yeah, I think that's what I thought. It's like, it's the two things, isn't it? They're tied together, which could be the collaborative bit, or it could be the tension of being the confusion. Yeah, um, it, it could also signify there's no space from there. You know, they're pretty, looks pretty rigid from where I'm sitting. I don't know if that's true, but it doesn't look like there's much fluidity, much room for emergence from mm -hmm. that position. Just to feed that back to you. Yeah. Um, okay. Anything else you want to say at this point or can I move on to talk to someone else? For now, but you can move on. So, representative for hard to deal with. What's going on for you? What's going on in your body? I'm feeling a little bit uh, anxious and uh, curious to know that uh, how how I'm, I'm I'm being chosen as, or how I've been looked at, uh, hard to deal with. This is what my curiosity is and a confusion also. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's all. That's all. Yeah, you're, you're confused. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So let me go back to representative for Andrew. Now you've heard that. What does that illuminate for you? I saw a smile. I suppose, yeah, perhaps it's slightly easier 
dealing with confusion? Because we might both be a bit confused. So, thank you for that. Andrew, not representative for Andrew, Andrew, yourself, would it be okay with you if we brought in confusion? Yes. Okay, so can you please choose a representative for confusion? I, I'm doing it randomly, so whoever I choose, I'm just doing it randomly. It's yeah, it's clear. fine. We know that. It's fine. There's yeah, no... Yes. yes. Uh, Cecil Rosero. Cecil. 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 Would you like to be the representative for confusion? Sure. Let me just... So I'm rep for confusion, right? So, thank you. Representative for Confusion, you've been invited into the space. How are you feeling? Um, I'm having a blast. <laughs> so I'm seeing, this, I'm, I'm seeing these two people or two entities, let's say, confused. And I'm like, oh, I'm doing a good job here. Everyone's confused, no problem. <laughs> I'm watching a show, I'm watching a game. I'm having fun. Thank you. Representative for hard to deal with. What's going on for you now? Yeah, I am a uh, little bit, um, um, again, a little bit confused. Is that because confusion is quite happy, in fact? <laughs> so that's what my feeling is. Uh, the more I'm confused, the more the rep for confusion or the confusion itself is happier. So th this is again, a sort of increasing my anxiety. So you've got increased anxiety. That's right. And where are you feeling that anxiety? Where are you holding it? Uh, in my brain. In your brain. And what's going on in your body rather than your brain? Uh, in my body, no, no specific um, uh, reaction, but uh, I, I can feel something in my stomach also. Okay, thank you for that. Representative for Jane, what's going, uh, for, sorry, for Andrew, what's going on for you now? Um, I suppose there was the slight release of comedy, the thought that confusion is having fun. Um, I suppose fun and confusion wouldn't normally go together in, in the way way I was thinking so um, and I, I think a feeling a bit of a sort of warmth towards hard to deal with that he was now feeling more confused or more anxious. Mm. What's going on with your arms now? And um, they're, they're less tight, <laughs> they've moved a bit. And I've noticed you're smiling. Since confusion came in, I noticed you were smiling. It was the, I think it's the fun element for confusion. So it was a surprise, I suppose, a surprise that confusion was having fun. Okay. Confusion, you'd like to say something. Can I say something? Yes, I felt myself, um, like fading a little, a little bit when um, the representative for how to deal with started to speak because I noticed that um, as long as they would understand that both of the, these entities would understand that they would be in confusion, the confusion, which is me, was going to start to fade and they would move into clarity because at one end of the spectrum, there's confusion, the other end there's clarity and we always move in between both. And basically, as soon as they will um like facilitate take the right action that that will bring them together i will disappear and i had this this uh, feeling of starting to fade like literally i could 
almost feel the life being sucked out of me. And I was like, oh, but I'm even like paling and like if I was a cartoon, I would just slowly disappear. And I, so it made me um, both a bit scared. I was like, oh fuck, I'm going to miss the rest of the show. But at the same time, I felt, um, oh, that's good for them because this, this will solve their problem. And like, I'll just go somewhere else. There's plenty of confusion everywhere in the world. I can just go watch another show. Okay, well, thanks for that. So it seems that we need another element. And you mentioned if you're all going in the same direction, you mentioned there are polarities between confusion and uh, clarity. So how would it be if we brought in the end goal, which is the common purpose? How would that feel for you, Andrew? It, it sounds fantastic because the end goal, uh, for, for those who are good in planning, they start with the end, they start from the end. So bringing the end goal will sound fantastic for us. Yeah, okay. So. Thank you. So would you like to choose a rep then for common purpose? I choose Co common purpose. Common purpose being your mutual uh, goals. Could be end goal, could be mutual yes. goals, whatever you want to name it as. It's your party. Yes, the uh, common purpose. That is, uh, I bring in the uh, an. And Clenat. Um, Anna, would you like to represent Common Purpose? Uh, yes. Um, I'll just rename myself. Um. So welcome, Common Purpose. Thank you. So how do you feel, Common Purpose? You've entered a system where there's hard to deal with, there's confusion, and there's individuals. How do you feel? Um, right now I feel, uh, I guess, uh, anxious in a way, uh, but the anxiety is around, uh, I guess, the expression. I can feel my shoulders weighing down, so I guess there's a weight Mm. Yeah. A lot weighing on you. Mm. Rep for Andrew. Thank you. Rep for Colin Purpose. Rep for Andrew, you look at you were looking very thoughtful there. What was going on? Um I suppose thinking about common pers purpose being anxious. Mm. And the juxtaposition with confusion having fun. Mm. Okay. Hard to deal with. Thank you, Rep. Frandre. Hard to deal with. How are you feeling? I feel that um, as uh, the common purpose is now visible. And I can see that one. So the, the, the role of confusion is getting faded as uh, confusion herself said. So mm. I, I feel optimistic that now I would no longer be hard to deal with person. So I, I have a good feeling now. Thank you. And confusion, what's going on for you? Um, I have a, a clear feeling in my body that my job is done. I gave so the, like I, I gave those people the, those, the field of confusion and now they have everything they need to figure out themselves what they need and they don't need me anymore. They can move on to clarity with whatever they have retrieved inside of the confusion that I kind of provided, if I can say that. Um, and like my job, I can work somewhere else and they don't need any more con confusion in this situation. They can move on, they know what to do, they know, what, they know how to how to continue and they know the next step they need to take 
they don't need my confusion anymore. Thank you. Rec for common purpose, what do you need? Um, I guess that I'll explain how I feel right now, if that's okay. Um, so the, the anxiety has moved from my stomach area. Uh, it's gone. Uh, what I feel is a pressure, uh, not negative, but a pressure in my head. Uh, um, and the, the weight has gone, but I'm feeling a pressure in my head. Um, and my feeling, interestingly, my feeling towards confusion um, confusion wasn't an, uh, a consideration in my anxiety. My anxiety had been around rep for Andrew and hard to deal with. That, that's where my, my issues were focused. And now that confusion, when confusion spoke, that lifted the weight from the stomach and the weight from the shoulders or the anxiety. Uh, and now the pressure in the head is more around what to do for the two. Uh, and I guess that's the pressure I'm feeling in the head. And what to do for the two? For, for, for rep, for, uh, hard to deal with and rep for Andrew. So maybe you could ask them, you know, what you need to do to help them. You could actually do that, could you not? Yes. So would you like uh, to do that? And then we're going to finish this particular intervention, if that's OK. So, um, you know, rep for Andrew and um, hard to deal with. Um, my question to you is, What, what is your, your, um, your, your, I guess, what is your shared, what are your shared commonalities? What are your commonalities? What are the things that you share in common? I guess that's the starting point. That's the question. Wonderful. Thank you very much. We're gonna we're gonna leave it here. So, Andrew, the process now is that you uh, go to your representatives one at a time, and you thank them for representing you, and you tell them that they are now themselves. So, I'll, I'll give you the example for Rep. For Andrew. So Rep for Andrew, thank you for representing me. You're now Jane. So would you like to do that with the others? No. In fact, you should technically speak it, speaking, uh, do it with Jane to be clean. <laughs> Sorry? Pardon? Uh, if you if you say to if you say to to rep for Andrew, thank you for representing me. You are now Jane, and you do that to all of them. Oh yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Jane, for representing me. Of course, you are not uh, you are not Andrew. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the second one, I I forget uh, his name. Is hard to deal with. The, the name was. At nah. Nadine. Nadine. So Nadine. So the, the words are, thank you for representing hard to deal with. You are now Nadine. Uh, thank you for representing hard to deal with. You are now Nadine. And thank uh, you. Uh, for, uh, for confusion. Uh, thank you for representing uh, confusion. You are now uh, Ceci. And uh, the, rep, the rep for common purpose, uh, thank you for representing common purpose. You are now Anna. Thank, thank you. you. So, Andrew, 
How are you feeling? I feel the objective has been achieved. The clarity of purpose has been achieved. Because uh, what was there was this issue of uh, misconception. I had to deal with people who were hard to deal with. In the midst, uh, there was confusion, but uh, because of creating that enabling environment, uh, uh, there was no, we created a precision. And uh, the concept of collaboration was well captured, was well conceptualized. And uh, at the end of the day, we achieved our common purpose. We achieved our objective, which mm. is now the conception of the term collaboration. And now Thank because you. now know, now know the meaning of the term collaboration, we can now start working together. And, and, and if I might also add, you, you hopefully, all of you in the field will have noticed the importance of a common purpose. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you so much for volunteering. It was very brave. So we definitely had bravery in the system. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much. So back to everybody else. Welcome back, everybody. If you'd like to turn your videos back on now. So does anyone want to make an observation about what they noticed? If you've got questions, put them in the chat. We'll handle those. But this is just around what did you notice? What if, in other words, what did you learn? I think uh, Ajay here, may I? Sure, please do. Uh, so I think the skill of bringing the common purpose in play within a system, uh, I think that's the one which at least I connected to. I have to credit my co-facilitator here. She was, she was uh, giving me nods through the chat. That's the way we work. And... Uh, it was a decision between whether to bring in clarity, which is probably never achievable, actually, full clarity, and common purpose, and Corinne suggested common purpose. But I also want to say that the voice from the field at the end, um, um, Andrew mentioned commonality. So that's obviously something to explore. What are the commonalities? Yeah. Um, one of the representatives actually gave that information. So I think that there's something to explore there. Yeah. Yes. Yes, so there's, there's a comment in the chat that actually identifying confusion in both parties helped to bring the parties together and therefore were able to align towards the common purpose. So yes, it's all very easy to think it all belongs to someone else. If you remember, Andrew, excuse me, Andrew, if you remember, you were talking about they, them at the beginning. And actually, everyone in the system can be confused. Everyone in the system can be anxious for different reasons, oftentimes, and depending on you, your own unique perspectives. Okay. Confusion was the common factor, exactly as well, once that was put into the system, that was the common factor. Confusion was driving the show, in fact, as we saw. Confusion was having great fun. And in fact, the more we learn to work emergently, the more we can embrace confusion. Confusion can be our friend because it can allow us to go in many different directions. Okay. Anything else? Anything else you want to say, Corinne? No, I'm just going to say that uh, that that we have a few minutes if people want to ask questions for the, the final little burst. Uh, this has really literally been um, a kind of glimpse into the methodology, which is designed to shine some light on where there might be um, avenues worth exploring. But obviously, we could have gone on for a long time with all of this because they, they're very big, complex systems, as, as Jenny mentioned at the beginning. So it was really just a, a taster 
for all of you to see, but we hope that uh, it's been an interesting experience. And you do, if anyone has any burning question, they can send it in the chat and we'll, we'll have a, a go at answering it. I had a, a, a thought around do competition and, and uh, collaboration have to be binary competing polls? That was something that came up for me in this session. So that's my question. No, they don't. But the position that Cor Corinne originally put them in, they weren't binary. They just existed. Indeed. And if we pretend, I think I said in the beginning, if we pretend that co competition doesn't exist, we're operating blind, really. And, and it's it, one of the principles of systems is that whatever is excluded holds a lot of energy and that everything must have its place, as we, as we saw in the demonstration. So if you try and, and uh, minimize or, or exclude competition um, and not give it its rightful place, um, it's still going to attract a lot of energy. So um, you can move between different parts and see at certain times there will be more pull towards competition because we're competing for resources. So it's necessary. Uh, and other times when it'll be um, collaboration. You can see it as the yin and yang, which are not polarized, but both present. And there's an awful lot we could say about that as well. <laughs> In fact, we could go on all day if you don't want to go to your other sessions. <laughs> but for now, um, if there's no more questions, how there, there is a question. There's two, in fact. In your experience after a session like this, how does one build, build on as issue that needs more time to, oh, an issue that needs more time to be explored, for, exam, for example, commonality. Uh, well, I'm going to invite you in a moment to just explore your own collaboration needs and to identify what next step you will take. So my, our invitation is for you to go out there and identify who you want to collaborate with about what and to engage in a in a call at least to identify, first of all, what's your common purpose as we've seen today. Uh, so we'll do that exercise in a moment. Um, how do we apply the methodology when collaborating within Catalyst? Is it just a personal exercise? Or uh, honestly, you can use this approach with just about anything. You can do an individual constellation before you go into a meeting you can identify you know you could take one of the one of the SDGs you could have a whole um, constellation around just one you could have another constellation around the interrelationship between all the SDGs it the sky's the limit with this work there are no barriers Corinne you perhaps want to say more about that I just wanted to say that it's actually a, a powerful alternative to discussion, cuts through a lot of narrative. And it's, it's really how to make something which you sort of feel implicitly in your sense of a, of a situation and you, you map it so you can see what's going on. So instead of talking and analyzing a situation, you can just think what are the elements most important here and map them as we did so that you can, it'll help you to see more clearly the relationship between them. In a nutshell, that's, that's what we've been doing. Um, and, and yes, it, as Jenny says, it, it can be applied in, in all sorts of situations, provided that there is some real energy, really, real interest driving it, because we're, this is energy work, as you probably realize. And so you need some fuel to push it. Just sheer, curiosity doesn't work. And there are, certain, there are certain situations in which this method is not so useful, but... Um, such as? Such as when you've got a desired outcome that you want to get to no matter what. Okay. Because like all emergent work, <laughs> and any of you who are working, coaching, whatever, you don't know what's going to come up. You know, this is it. It's risky. So if you, if you have, for example, a, a set action plan with a desired outcome that you want to go for, 
I wouldn't necessarily think that constellation is the best way to go about it. Does that answer the question? It also doesn't work when you're talking about others. It, you have to start off with yourself and your relationship to the issue, which is why I pulled Andrew back from they, them, it, the it, to I. Um, thank you, Carol. SDGs, I've learned that acronym as well in the last week, uh, and now I can't stop using it, is Sustainable Development Goals from the UN. Okay, um, let's finish then, if that's okay, because we're coming up. Three minutes to define your next step <laughs> that you will take. Or comment. <laughs> <laughs> to start off on your new collaboration journey, having seen what you've seen today. And post it in, the, when I say go, post it in the chat and we'll have a chat first. Could, could you repeat that invitation, please? The, the first step towards your new collaboration journey. And do you want us to write it and not press enter? Yes, please. Thank you, Nick, for being specific. Thank you. So this could be, I'm going to contact so-and-so. I am going to reflect first before I contact so-and-so. I am going to work on our common vision. I'm going to invite others to re-examine our common purpose, whatever it is. It's just a first step, a first step towards better. Okay, are we all ready? Okay, so one, two, three, go. Whoa. <laughs> That's great. So this is wonderful. So we've got in two minutes, guys, share anxiety, make myself clear about the purpose, start rethinking our present options, do a personal constellation. Uh, reach out to people within my network to establish common ground. Um, examine my ego and purpose. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> Trying to focus on the commonalities and not just the outcome. Oh, how wonderful. Recognizing the complexity of collaborations and the need for connections between individuals and an object of collaboration. Embrace confusion. I'm going to leave it there. How wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone, for your participation. Fantastic. Fantastic. I hope I'm wishing useful. you good luck in your collaboration journeys. Yes, thank yes. you so much, Corinne. And thank, thank you. Thank you, Catalyst 2030. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Huge thanks to everyone, especially the super generous and super wise uh, gentle hosts, but for everyone for showing up, uh, that was really, I mean, for me, that was fabulous. I, I, would, I would love to hear what you thought about it. We've got some links in the chat for you to give some feedback. We'd love to learn. Um, yeah, and again, just uh, huge thanks to everyone in particular. Yeah, thanks for stepping up. Thank you. Thank awesome. you, guys. <laughs> Thank, Thank you.